In the spectacular history of the Ferrari F1 team, the F14T is always likely to bring a tear to their eye. But unfortunately, only a tear of sadness and frustration. Fernando Alonso now looks at his car that has sadly let him down. A car designed for the age of the new hybrid turbo power unit, one so far totally dominated by Mercedes-Benz. Fans decided on its final name, 14 for 2014, T for turbo. Kimi Raikkonen would rejoin the team after five years away, rallying and at Lotus F1. And his teammate was the mighty and irrepressible Fernando Alonso. Between them, they'd finished fourth in the Constructors' Championship with only two podiums and, crucially, no victories. It has been a tough season in general, so to get a podium is always a, a nice surprise, let's say. But there's a small window of opportunity for the F14T to be loved once again. Under the current regulations and restrictions, the youngest car that you're allowed to test is from 2014. And so this week, Sebastian Vettel and Kimi Raikkonen have been testing the Pirelli tyres at their own Fiorano test track in anticipation of big changes for 2017. While the car was nicely warmed up, they asked Sky F1 if we'd like to have a run. We checked the diary, rang around friends, and with nothing better to do, we said yes. Yeah, right. My first task, of course, was to have a seat fitting so I could function properly behind the wheel and stay in position in the relentless corners. So we're going to start with Pedro De La Rosa's seat. De La Rosa's about the same across the shoulders as me. It's like you thin it in the hips, but it feels a bit. So, Kimmy, I'm going to drive the F14T. Let's start with the steering wheel briefly. Yeah, yeah. We've got, we got the neutral button there. Let me show yeah. the camera. We've got a neutral in the top left-hand corner. This is the brake. We change the brake bias. So. I, I shouldn't need too much more on there, I don't think. No, I mean, it's nothing that you need to. You can just leave it, just shift gears, yeah. and uh, that's it. I mean, uh, and how do, how do I start the car up? <laughs> I think I've got to put my hand up, and they're going to yeah. do the magic behind. I can show you. It's going to be first, and I think they will either yeah. put it, or yeah. they're going to put it in here, like P1, and then, yeah. uh, then the guy in the front will show you that it's OK. Yeah. And then you lift your left arm so the guy on the behind sees it and then he will crank it up once and stop and then start immediately to after. Go to P2. Yeah, then yeah. once you crank it up second time you go to P2. Okay, no pressure on me then, so you've been out, Sebastian's been out, you've set a benchmark. Well, uh, you, know, you can always go as fast as you want. You, you've driven <laughs> many races and many cars, so you should be okay. Yeah, we'll have, we'll have some fun. You should go for it and that's your mark. Fiorano was built in 1972, so the team could wheel a car out of the factory and test it. The great Enzo Ferrari used to love sitting in his office, listening to his beloved engines, or even alongside the track, observing his legendary drivers. It's three kilometers, or 1.9 miles long, and the average speed is around 100 miles an hour. The corners are varied in character to represent many of the European tracks. It also has a crossover and forms the shape of a drunken figure of eight. It's very compact and sits alongside the town of Maranello, where the road cars are built too. Having driven the Force India and Mercedes in 2015, both Mercedes powered, of course, this was going to be very interesting. All fired up and ready to go then. I love it when that particular roller shutter door goes up. Blankets off, plunk it into first gear, and out of this very famous garage. Fiorano track to myself then. A works Ferrari F1 car, it's not going to get much better than this. The town is all around us. Look, what a view that you're going to have while hanging the washing out. Unbelievable. A tricky little right left chicane you can steal a bit of curb and bring it left very quickly with a right hander onto the bridge. Kimmy taught me how to go around here a little faster. Nasty bump on that bridge. Lauda, Cross, Mansell, Alonso, and the great Michael Schumacher. So many more great drivers, too, would have lapped relentlessly around here. There's something so special, so privileged to be able to drive a works Ferrari F1 car outside 
the factory doors. Immense. I mean, it's very drivable. Whenever we come here, they just give us full house, total access. I feel like I'm doing a Grand Prix. That's the level of professionalism going on around me. And they take everything seriously. I'm just an old duffer from the TV, having a go in one of their cars. Treated me like I was one of the works drivers and gave me a memorable, unforgettable experience. Second time I've been around here in an F1 car. I hope it's not the last. Damon, explain to those at home, from a driver's perspective, the lure of the red car. Well, I mean, it's it's 